Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome to the Learning Lab, episode 21, Cuddlebug Holiday Folders, Hanging Ornaments. I am so excited about everything I was able to accomplish with this one folder, so come on into the lab and let me share some of these techniques with you. Once you run your paper through the folder, you'll get an embossed image that looks like this, and that is beautiful. One hint is when you want your embossing really crisp, I'd say use a shim to go with it. I used the back of some uh, Kane Company dimensional stickers that I bought. It's the perfect size for my cuddlebug plate. I just place it on top, run it through, and that's what gives me this nice crisp impression that you see. So, of course, what did I decide to do next? I decided to run it through on some black cardstock and it came out looking just as nice on that as well. You get the embossed and you get the debossed area on there also. So then I thought, well, what if I put some ink in the Cuddlebug folder and run it through? And so for this, I took my folder and I didn't do the Cuddlebug side, I'm doing the bottom. I just took some of my Memento Dewdrop ink pads and I just went over where I wanted and then I took a Q-tip and just cleaned up any excess areas. I'm going to huff on this, hoping that I can get it to go nicely through the cuddle bug since I did pre-ink this before starting the video. So bear with me. And because this is plastic, it will stay wet uh, a bit longer. So there's my paper inside. I'm going to place that onto my plate. Place my uh, 2B plates and my shim on top. And let's look at our results. And there it is. Very, very nice. Now by taking your time with this and really cleaning it up, you can get some very nice effects. But you can also take just a single ink pad and go across the entire front of the Cuddlebug folder and get something really nice. And this was done with a soft green. And as you can see, it's really pale and really faded out. And if that's a look that you're going for, this is something you might want to consider. So then I played around with the black one that I put through. And on here I used a lot of different Sakura pins and Fiskars uh, pins. I was semi-impressed with how that looked. Not totally enamored, but it really would look nice on a card front. Then I took my white card and played around with it with some of the same techniques just to see what kind of look I would get. And I used some of the Fiskars pins, some of the opaque pins, and some of the Stardust pins. And I also wanted to try my folder by inking up the inside of it. And this is a die based ink pad and it's just a matter of inking it all the way across. And so there's my folder, nice and black and juicy on the inside. I'll take my white card, carefully place that down, close my folder, and now I'm ready to create my sandwich and run this back through my cuddle bug and see what comes out on the other side. And voila, there it is. Since I didn't ink all the way up, it's just cut that off. Now, because I want this to appear like glass, I am going to use some of my uh, clear embossing ink from Ranger and some of my ultra thick embossing enamel this is going to be so much fun. I can take some of this and just um, generously squeeze it onto my card. And I am just going to pretty much glop it on. Okay, and there is my card liberally coated. I'm ready to start with my ultra thick embossing enamel. Here comes the fun part. And you can see just how large the granules are on this. And so here goes. And right there in the center, you can see how it is starting to look like glass. Okay, so here's what I learned. You can't videotape and heat emboss ultra thick embossing enamel at the same time. You really got to get this <laughs> when it's hot. So I'm having to put um, another coat on top of the coat that I already have. Just so I can get that thick glass like look that I want. So sorry about that. Also, uh, FYI, this gets really, really hot. 
So watch your fingers and just be careful with this uh, ultra thick embossing enamel, also commonly referred to as beauty. Then once you've finished all of your coats and added a bit of glitter, I added some green and lavender in there, although some of the lavender blew away when I sprinkled it on, but you get a beautiful glass-like look with some uh, shiny sparkles in the background. Fab, fab, fab. Now once this dries, you can also crack it to give it a crackled effect, and you can also run it through your cuddle bug, maybe with one of the <coughs> ovals and uh, make it as a tag. But I think that is absolutely stunning. Okay, on to the card that I shared with you at the very beginning. Oh my goodness, before I move on, I have to share this with you. I actually chalked this one using some of the uh, Pebbles Pearlescent uh, Chalking Set. And the colors just glisten and glow. Let me share with you the real prototype that preceded uh, the blue one. It's actually this. This is the card I created. And I know how people are taking the gypsy around with them. Well, I take my little bag of cuddle bugged items with me so that I can work on them if I'm ever stuck somewhere. And on this one, I simply had the folder, some paper, and a graphite pencil. And I just took my pencil and colored over the cuddle bug folder to get that image. So that's something you could try also with your color pencils. So here's what I did. I took this and went through it a number of times and actually created a very long strip that looked like this, except I had more on the bottom. Then I used my Tim Holtz um, Faded Jeans Distress Ink and some of that cut and dry foam and just went around my entire thing. I went along here with some glue and sprinkled some snowflake embossing tinsel on there just to give it a little bit of sheen without overpowering it. On the tops of the ornaments, I used some blue pastel glitter and I used some of my <laughs> glossy accents on some of the ornaments just to make them glow and these are some of the Inka Dinka Doo stamps that I put across uh, the bottom and I love this joy to the world the Lord has come it was supposed to say something else but that's the one I had at hand and on the inside for that tree and I'll see if I can peek down in there for you I have some white snowflakes on it and it's just simply glued to the back of the card so when you see it and it stands up, it looks like that. And you have that uh, aperture that's cut in there. And the way I achieved that was I took this and um, folded it, but it was on the opposite side. And I actually had a Sizzix tree stamp that I used to run this through. But if not, you can always cut out your own template, put it on just half of your card, trace around, cut that out and you're going to have your nice aperture. This is the one I was playing around with except I used the one that had gone through the cuddle bug machine so I did have some embossing on it. But I sprayed this with some glimmer mist. I used the suede which is kind of a deep dark red brown and I used the red velvet and a nice little glistening on that. And then my son wanted to help me out so he took my dauber and started inking back of my tree and he wanted to know if I would use his side and I told him maybe in another video. And I used some of these. They're from the paper seller and they're like uh, little peel off icicles and I only wanted um, the snowflake part and that's what I used to adorn the tree on the inside. I want to use my Cricut and maybe cut some ornaments or some snowflakes and have that hang uh, inside the aperture. Although this is a very rough draft of my first uh, Cuddlebug Holiday Folder, I am really liking it. Thank you for joining me in the lab today. Hope you learned a few techniques to try on your Christmas cards for this holiday season. Please remember to visit my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com for a bit more creativity and inspiration. Because it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Until then.